Hi there, I'm Pierce Spicinger with Portland Mountain Rescue. We're here at the MRA conference and at one of the field sessions at Eagle Rock. Today we'll be hearing from experts and our fellow MRA teams on how they do a BC pickoff. There's a variety of ways to do that. We'll be covering one of those here at Eagle Rock and another one was covered in the pre-conference session. We hope you enjoy what you see and get something out of it for your future learning. See you soon. Edge. 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 Maestro. 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 Paul team. Paul. Paul. And safety. Safety. And attendant. I'll take attendant. I think you got everybody. I'm Mike Erickson with Larimer County Search and Rescue. We're out here at Eagle Rock School practicing what we call a BC pickoff. BC stands for better control. It's a um, method that we learned from the rigging for rescue class works really well for us. So the pickoff is used uh, when we're trying to get a person off of a cliff for a uh, vertical environment without severe injuries. They don't need to be stabilized in a litter. So this could be, uh, for example, somebody who is cliffed out. They've climbed up, free climbing, they can't get down and they can't top out. Could be a light injury, uh, an ankle injury or a wrist injury where um, our priority is just first to get them to safe ground and then we can tend to their injuries. So of course, we're not gonna send a rescuer down to a person unless that's really necessary. Um, if we can help them effect a safe self-rescue, go that's going to be our first priority. So we have a female climber over the side of this cliff. Uh, for unknown reasons, she's unable to continue to descend on her rope. We've been unable to reach her with ropes that we can throw to her. Uh, so what we're gonna have to do is send a rescuer over the edge, attach her to our system, uh, DC her rope, and then at that point, we can lower both the rescuer. The BC pickoff system is what we call an assisted pickoff. So it is where the entire team is helping to lower the rescuer to the patient rather than the rescuer lowering themselves on a single line and affecting the pickoff. We have a twin tension system set up here, uh, two independent anchors. We then use our maestros as our descent control devices. Um, they then come together with these two ropes to a master point that's connected to our attendant. We have pre-rigged a five to one that we can use to raise the attendant and the subject once they're on, um, once they're on our lines. And at that point, we can DC the subject's line. They're fully on our system. At that point, we'll go back to a twin tension lower and uh, get him to the ground. Orange line, ready. Orange ready. Ready. Attendant ready. Slack orange, slack red, approaching. Once our BC pickoff system is uh, assembled and safetyed, we will send an attendant over the edge. I'm gonna come down on your right side. Okay. I want you to keep your hands to yourself. Resist the urge to grab me while I'm coming over the edge. Is that cool? Yep. Are you hurting anyway? Yeah, I think I twisted my ankle. All right, take weight off your ankle. Try to keep it from moving as best you can. The attendant will be lowered near the patient, then we'll stop, we'll instruct the patient, um, you know, what to do, what not to do, what to expect, especially we don't want the patient leaping and grabbing at the attendant. Been wiggling your legs while you've been here? Yeah. Good, keep that up. Get next to the patient, clip them in to our system as soon as possible because we don't know whether the patient is on a rope you know, or whether that rope is safe. Here is your primary connection to our system. This orange rope here is your backup, so you have two points of connection. Once that's done, then the attendant will review the patient's system and injuries, determine um, the criticality of, of getting them up or down. Now that we got you on my system and thoroughly secured, so see these two knots up here? That's what's going to connect you to our system. We're gonna do a little haul up, and that's going to take the load 
off of this rope so that I can start disconnecting you from your system. Now you're fully secured onto my system and you have a backup. I've locked and I've locked these carabiners. So we're good to go there. This connection looks like a backup out to your ATC. I can slack a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this. I'm comfortable with that. Now we just need to get this third hand out of the way and disconnect that. So this is a third hand going into your belay loop and onto your rope here. I'm just gonna take this off of your system. We always rig for a raise in case it is needed. Also, we find that if the patient is on a dynamic rope, they will be hanging, putting so much stretch on that rope that we will need to do a short raise just to ease that tension so that the knot can be untied, release the patient from their original rope, then we do lower to the ground. Down slow. We're gonna lower pretty far down. I'm gonna end up letting you sit on my lap as we come down to the ground and then we will stop and disconnect. Six inches and down. So of course, we're not gonna send a rescuer down to a person unless that's really necessary. If we can help them effect a safe self-rescue, we'll go, that's going to be our first priority. Uh, next, we'll be taking a look at another way of doing this with a small party uh, group using a lightweight twin tension system and a, a piggyback design. And so with that, we have uh, Eddie Cartaya from Direct Action Vertical who'll be taking over now for the discussion. So as you see here, we have our two tension rope system. As with all two tension rope systems, it is uh, vital that each side of the system be independently able to sustain the full rescue load. Here you see an array of the nodes all going to Rock Pro, equalized very nicely, focusing on the master points, to which will be tied two bolins with a bite with a forward facing loop. This array allows an operational line to come out of the knot as well as a multi-purpose line, which can be the edge line, a piggyback haul line, can serve many different functions. So what you're about to do here now is our rescuers in the white jacket and the red helmet to the right, and an inspection is being uh, done at this point by the rescue leader in the red jacket. The rescue will be repelling independently on their own power on the left line that the red inspector has their hands on while they're being belayed with a second line coming in from just above, you'll see that on the second line or the belay line as we'll refer to it, has a purcell that is clipped to a gear loop on the left hip of the rescuer. A lanyard from the rescuer also stored in the left gear loop, that will comprise the second connection to the patient. So we still have two connections to the patient, one from belay, one from main. You'll see that the rescuer in the white jacket, orange helmet has her hands primed and ready to operate the Munter hitch and the belay line in a belay mode. He's not lowering the responder, he's simply belaying him down. The rescuer is now repelling towards an edge. The rescuer here is installing a high redirect. This will make it a lot easier to pass that edge when he returns with the patient in tow. One detail to note is you'll see that the res rescuer is operating out of a leg bag. The rope is out of a leg bag, so it doesn't get involved with topography on the cliff or it prevents a panic grab from the uh, patient themselves. There you see the rescuer in white jacket, orange helmet, is very carefully operating the Munter hitch in belay mode. And the rescuer now gets positioned adjacent to the patient who is in the blue jacket and the black helmet and they formulate the connections here. The connections in this case is a red purcell from the belay line is clipped to the master attachment point on the patient, followed immediately by the tether going from the rescuer's master point to the patient's master point. Once both connections have been made, we get a thumbs up from the rescuer and the edge attendants will now install a piggyback haul system. You'll see here a Petzl Basic being installed with a carabiner and a pulley. You'll see that the rope grabs are being set as far forward as possible. And the edge attendant is now gonna operate the piggyback hauls from up top. Both the haulers, both have handled ascenders on the haul strands. This is only to facilitate a good strong grab of the rope, it's eight millimeter rope. All right, we get a thumbs up. Notice that they're keeping the haul strands in even pace with each other, nice and slow. 
When the rescuer gets to the higher redirect, he's gonna call for a pause. The mantra hitches will be held in their stop position with both hands squeezing them, and he will disconnect. The key thing here that's part of the training event for these courses is to never let go of the control strand of the mantra hitch. There's a couple different ways to do that. Mantra hitches are very powerful as long as you never release control, full handed control of the control strand. It's very important that the mantra hitch control strand is never released. Mantra hitches are capable of holding full loads as long as the control strand is held soundly with both hands. So you'll see fastidious attention to detail where the hands are operated in such a manner that the control strand is never released. One thing you can also do to add the whistle stop component to this is to add a Petzl Basic attached to a lanyard on the op Munter operator. And they use that to pull on the control strand. Should anything happen, the Basic will simply jam against the beaner and the rescuer's weights will perform the whistle test function. There's the rescuer disconnecting the high redirect while both monitors were being held. And then we have our rescuer and our patients back safely at the top. This is a nice viewpoint of the dual connections. You see again, the red purcell from the left strand, AKA belay strand tied to the patient's uh, master point and the lanyard going from the rescuer to the patient's master point. As soon as the operation is complete, both sides are being tied off at that time. Hey, I'm Blake McCarty with Larimer County Search and Rescue. Uh, today I spent the day as an attendant for a BC pickoff, uh, practicing and honing our skills at the MRA conference here in Estes Park, Colorado. It's been a great way to learn and expand my skill set for search and rescue and really enjoyed my time here at this conference. I'm Liz Graffio with Larimer County Search and Rescue. Uh, I was able to be the patient today during the BC pickoff um, and it was a great experience. Got to see what it's like from a patient perspective. Um, got to see my teammates in action, uh, taking care of me and just to see exactly how it should go. Um, it was great. The MRA conference this year has been amazing and we're really excited to see you next year. Hey, I'm Derek Calloway with Limbo Central Rescue Squad and Appalachian Mountain Rescue Team out of Western North Carolina. And uh, it's been a really great pleasure to spend time with fellow rescuers here in Estes Park, Colorado at the Mountain Rescue Association's uh, Spring Conference that Larimer County Search and Rescue has hosted. They've done a fabulous job with it. A beautiful location and great people. And hope you guys can gain some knowledge from the video series and we look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you very much for joining us and joining the MRA conference this year.